Better get the cool slow, y'all, cause we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> now available in paperback and e-reader, e-steam cancel vacation. Hell's aspiring angel takes on a social justice social media mob looking to cancel her in this all new e-steam series adventure. Get e-steam cancel vacation in paperback and e-readers today. New York Mayor Eric Adams says the influx of migrants coming into New York City could cost $12 billion over the next three years. As more and more migrants pour into New York City, Mayor Adams saying the cost is escalating into the billions of dollars. He says without major policy changes and additional support from the state and federal government, caring for asylum seekers could cost the city $12 billion over the next three years. Sonia Rincon is live in Midtown with details. Sonia. Sade, the Roosevelt Hotel is still very busy with new arrivals, but there are no migrants waiting or sleeping on the sidewalk today. And the city says that is in part because the state has helped find more shelter space, but that it's not enough. The mayor today saying if the federal government doesn't come up with a real decompression strategy and reimburse the city for all its spending on this national crisis, New York City taxpayers will be on the hook for about $4 billion each year for the next three years. <laughs> $12 billion. That has to come from somewhere. That $12 billion figure, which the mayor says will inevitably impact all city services, factors in the current rate of arrivals. So if we continue to do an average of 2,500 a week, 5,000 every two weeks, 10,000 a month. You don't have to be a, a mathematician to understand what this is doing to our city. Five buses arrived within the last 24 hours at the Port Authority bus terminal. The migrants are handed flyers with walking directions to the Roosevelt Hotel. From here, they are bused to other shelters. Randall's Island soccer fields will soon have one. No City! And last night, neighbors of the Creedmoor Psychiatric Hospital in Queens Village protested against the planned use of tents on the campus there. I understand that the feeling that people are having on the ground. But this is what outer space means. We have to find less than desirable locations for people to stay. Right now, there are 57,000 migrants in the city's care. The city estimates that'll be up to 100,000 two years from now because the rate of those entering the system is outpacing that of those leaving it. The cost of shelter is making up nearly half the $383 a day the city says it's spending per migrant household, which averages between two and three people. The city says that's adding up to $9.8 million per day. I think one of the solutions that's not being talked about is moving the unhoused community that have been hostages in the shelter system for years into dignified housing, and that will free up space. Power Malu runs a grassroots organization helping new arrivals one bus at a time for the last year. They're not here to take from us. They're here to actually contribute. Now, there has been some movement when it comes to help from the federal government. The mayor is still asking for expedited work authorization and an emergency declaration, but there is a team expected here at the Roosevelt from the Homeland Security Department. They're expected to take a look around and report back to Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The mayor today calling that a step in the right direction. I have to wonder, is this the sad state of New York politics under the Blue Party? Or is this bad comedy? Now, the reason why I wonder if this is bad comedy is because the desperate way that Eric Adams is acting really reminds me of an old episode of the Jeffersons from the 1970s or the 1980s, where George Jefferson, who thought he could shuck and jive his way out of a situation, goes out here and runs his big mouth and makes a check that his ass just can't cash. And when he goes out here 
and runs his mouth to the point where he creates a situation where his ass can't cash the check, what he does is go chasing after Mr. Whittendale, hoping to get a loan to bail himself out of the jam that he shucked and jived himself into. Now, Eric Adams basically wound up going out here and shucking and jiving his way into this situation, hoping to go out here and gain the favor of higher up members in the Blue Party, such as New York Governor Kathy Hochul, former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, and President Joe Biden, hoping that if he went out here and towed the party line as related to policies left by former New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, he would be able to get a covert contract established where he would hopefully be appointed to some sort of higher up position inside of the Blue Party's political machine. Now, that's what he was planning in December of 2021 when he pulled a swerve on New Yorkers when he decided to continue supporting several policies that were established by Bill de Blasio, such as Bill de Blasio's jab mandate that kept millions of New Yorkers out of jobs for close to a year and the policy of a sanctuary city where he was going to keep the policy in place that Bill de Blasio established to virtue signal to the entire world that New York City wasn't racist like then President Donald Trump. Now, Eric Adams thought he could go out here and maintain this policy when Texas Governor Greg Abbott went out here and put it to the test by starting to bus migrants from Texas all the way up to New York City and other blue cities that said that they were sanctuary cities and wanted to test this policy to see how these cities would go out here and be able to receive these individuals. Now, in the beginning of December of 2022, Eric Adams went out here boasting about how New York City would be able to handle the load. And again, the cream of wheat man went out here, like George Jefferson, looking to try to jive his way out of a political situation, not understanding how serious the situation at the border really was. Because the situation at the border was extremely dire, with over three to four million people entering the country illegally. But that didn't really matter to Eric Adams, who didn't want to go out here and do any of the research as related to the crisis at the border. No, the only thing that mattered for Eric Adams was social currency at the time. And because he was only focused on social currency at the time and hoping to go out here and clout chase and gain the attention and approval for being a good boy, who told the Blue Party's party line all he cared about was looking to go out here and virtue signal and hope that he would get praised for being able to handle what he thought would be an easy situation with maybe a couple of hundred individuals who would be bussed up to New York City. But as January turned into February, Eric Adams started to start to get nervous and all of the bluster from the shucking and jiving started to change because as he saw that this migrant population was ballooning into 30 to 40,000, this is where Eric Adams started to get nervous and he started to call out the Biden administration for its lack of support as he was dealing with a fiscal crisis as related to trying to care for all of these migrants who were coming into the city. As we were coming into 30 to 40,000 migrants who were taking up space in every part of New York City's homeless shelter system and taking up space in most of New York's prominent hotels, we started to see that New York City really could not provide sanctuary for all of these individuals. And this is where Eric Adams looked to go out here and call out Joe Biden. And as he called out Mr. Bidendale, what happened was Mr. Bidendale responded by kicking Eric Adams out of his 2024 presidential campaign. 
Now, with Eric Adams realizing that he wasn't going to get any help from Washington, he tried to go out here and create a campaign to try to discourage migrants from wanting to come to the city. And what he wanted to do was go out here and start sending people down to the border once more because he visited the border way back in January to try to show that he was going to be so on top of things. But this time, what he wanted to do was create a passive-aggressive campaign and in hope to discourage all of the migrants from coming to New York City. Now, as he created this campaign, what he looked to do was go out here and discourage people by trying to give out flyers to many of the migrants at the border to tell them not to come to New York City because of the lack of housing, the high taxes, and the low wages. But this didn't work because many of the people who were migrants could not read or write in any language, and many had been watching TV shows from America such as Friends and Seinfeld and Sex in the City, and they wanted to live that New York high life and be a part of that New York culture. So that didn't really work, so Eric Adams then looked to escalate his campaign by offering to bus migrants to Canada but that blew up in his face when the Canadian leftists told him they didn't want any migrants. And then he went out here and escalated things even further by trying to go out here and create a whole debacle around the then closed Roosevelt Hotel. Now, the Roosevelt Hotel was a major tourist spot back in the from the from the 20s to the 2010s before it wound up closing. And this hotel had basically been vacant all throughout the pandemic. And Eric Adams thought, oh, I'll create, I'll rent this out and turn it into an intake center. And as he looked to turn it into an intake center, the hotel eventually became full to the point where he went out here and said that he didn't want any more buses coming to drop people off there. And again, looking to again discourage people where he thought he was going to discourage them. But what happened was the hotel, even though it was full, still had lots of migrants sitting outside waiting to be processed. And as they waited to be processed, the whole situation was turning into another public relations disaster. And as it turned into a public relations disaster where we had people sleeping in the streets on cardboard, what happened was it just embarrassed all of New York City's administration because we wound up with so, with so many people on the streets that it was going to turn the city into a squalid condition. And again, another embarrassment for the Adams administration, another embarrassment. But the whole thing is that does not deter Eric Adams, who is now at the point where he's desperate once more, begging for the help of Joe Biden. And as he begs for the help of Joe Biden, Joe Biden continues to be indifferent, like Mr. Whittendale he was to George Jefferson, because he see he doesn't really isn't concerned about this whole situation because it doesn't have any Ukrainians involved or doesn't involve anything as related to getting money from Congress through to the Ukraine. So Joe Biden doesn't really care and has been on his vacation as New York has been descending into chaos as related to this whole migrant situation. And as it has descended into chaos, he has basically sent one of his minions to go look at the situation, showing how little he actually cares about the whole situation in many of the cities like New York or these other blue cities or even places like Massachusetts, where the governor has basically declared a state of emergency. And when I really look at the whole situation with migrants, sadly, it mirrors a lot of what happened with George W. Bush and Hurricane Katrina and shows how callous those on the left are, like they were criticizing those on the right for being with Katrina. But you've got Eric Adams, who is in the same position as Ray Nagin, basically looking to go out here and beg for help. And unfortunately, as he begs for help with his emotions, instead of going out here and critically thinking, what he's done is gone out here and put a price tag on taking care of all of these migrants over the next three years of his term that basically looks to be extremely absurd because he's sitting there thinking that he can possibly get $12 billion to take care of all of these migrants from the government 
And nah, son, that's just not going to happen because anybody who knows politics understands that there's a process to getting money allocated and we're not in the middle of a COVID pandemic where the government is going to quickly go out here and allocate all of this money. No, when it comes to going out here and trying to allocate money for people who are not who are illegally entering the country, you're not going to get much sympathy and support from members of the Red Party who control the House or even some members of the Blue Party in the Senate like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema as related to getting support for legislation to allocate this kind of money. Because to go out here and get any sort of money through Congress is a monumental task and it takes years to get any sort of money allocated through Congress and that's where Eric Adams basically shows his political inexperience because you cannot go out here and look to beg, plead, and shame people into going out here and allocating this large amount of money for people who entered the country illegally. Yes, you may have had a crisis on the ground, but it's not a crisis that's going to get support from most Americans because these were people who entered the country illegally and moreover people are not going to be that sympathetic to you at all because it was Eric Adams whose mouth that wrote the check that his ass can't cash right now because all he was looking to do was virtue signal and pander to a whole group of higher up politicians in the hopes of going out here and bootlicking and pandering for a higher up job but those chances of him getting that higher up job are slim to none at this point because he criticized excuse me the Biden administration putting his foot in his mouth and Joe Biden has basically put a foot in Eric Adams' ass because he hasn't spoken to him since 2022, and you would think he would have gotten the message right there because when people want to talk to someone, they make them a priority. Because what I've learned from the dating scene is that when a woman wants to talk to a dude, she's going to talk to him almost immediately. She's going to be making calls to him. And the same thing goes with business contacts. If somebody wants to do business with you and somebody wants to help you out, they're going to automatically go out here and look to talk to you almost immediately. That's just how it is as related to business. But Eric Adams is too spellbound in trying to get white acceptance to see that Mr. Bidendale has no respect for him because if he had respect for him, he would not have let him get jammed up like this. No, he would have gone out here as the president and said, no, you don't need to take and accept any of these individuals on these buses because they've entered the country illegally. And since they've entered the country illegally, it is up to ICE or INS to deal with these individuals. And I will tell you to turn those buses around because it is an INS situation. It is up to ICE and INS to deal with these individuals. But no, Joe Biden let this whole situation go on and he let it go on because he thought, again, he could virtue signal as related to the situation. And again, this entire virtue signaling is has turned into a debacle. And it's a debacle that has the mayor out here begging for $12 billion, looking again like George Jefferson in an episode of The Jeffersons, presenting one of the pieces of comedy as related to politics that have basically embarrassed the entire country because this whole situation just shows how leadership has collapsed and the leadership has collapsed because the leaders are too caught up in their feelings about Donald Trump to understand that they're creating a situation that is putting national security at risk because this whole situation goes beyond money. This was all about national security and that's part of what Greg Abbott was trying to show with these individuals who are coming in unvetted, unchecked, and just coming in illegally that these cities that say that they're sanctuary cities say they could take care of them, but we're seeing that they can't take care of them and Eric Adams' whole 
situation shows that you can't shuck and jive your way out of this situation. No, this situation requires strong leadership. This whole situation requires somebody who has a vision and a plan and somebody who understands the law to go out here and be an effective leader as related to the executive branch of New York City. Because with New York City's budget right now at straining at as related to deficits that de Blasio left and this whole migrant situation, New York City is teetering on bankruptcy as related to Eric Adams' mismanagement because he governed on feelings and governed on trying to clout chase higher-ups in Washington instead of looking to govern his municipality and looking to go out here and be an effective executive. Because again, an effective executive may have gone out here and alienated some people on the far left, but he would have gained the support of all New Yorkers by saying, hey, this is not something that we can handle locally. This is a INS federal situation. But Eric Adams, again, didn't want to do that. No, all he wanted to go out here is virtue signal. And we're seeing the, the consequences of virtue signaling in a mayor who has become extremely desperate and went from boasting about going out here and being able to take care of migrants to becoming so desperate that he wound up flip-flopping twice as related to his position because first he went out here and flip-flopped as related to criticizing Joe Biden to now begging for Joe Biden's help and also flip-flopped as related to saying he could take care of these migrants but now realizes he's in over his head and basically has given his 2025 opponent in his own party or outside an opportunity to use all of this ammunition against him because this whole situation shows how ineffective he is as a leader and how incompetent he is that he allowed this situation to even manifest in the first place. So this whole situation basically has, as I see it, torpedoed Eric Adams' chances at a second term because only a group of imbeciles would go out here and vote for this man after the way he has basically mismanaged this entire situation. Because if you're begging for $12 billion from Washington, it just shows, one, weakness, and two, a complete lack of understanding of how politics is done in America. Because in order to get $12 billion, which you're not going to get, because, again, all of this money has to go through Congress, and we've got a Republican Congress right now that you cannot go out here and shame into giving you money. No, you have to show how this money is going to serve we the people, one, and two, you have to show how it is going to provide tangible results for citizens. So you're not going to get support from the Republican Party, which already told you not to do this. And you're not going to get support maybe even from members of your own blue party as related to getting this money allocated because this money has to go through the House and the Senate. And that can that's, again, a process that takes years. I mean, it took years for us to get the money for a, those tunnels that, that, that connected Grand Central with the LIRR. I mean, that process took over 20 years and it took years to go out here and get the money allocated for other projects. So he's sitting there thinking, oh, 12 billion is just going to come up out of nowhere because I'm emotional. And if I go out here and I cry and I try to shame people, this is going to make me look strong. But what everybody is seeing is weakness in the cream of wheat, man. They're seeing nothing but weakness and softness. And they see nothing but weakness in the cream of wheat, man. And they see a man that they have no respect for. A man they never really had much respect for in the beginning. Because, again, if Joe Biden had respect for Eric Adams, he would have been talking to him from day one. And he wouldn't have blown him off for almost an entire year. Because, again, people, when they want to talk to people, they go and talk to them. The way Biden could talk to Zelensky, even on his vacation. I mean, he can talk to the president of Ukraine, but he can't talk to one of the mayors in his biggest cities. 
in his country. And again, that just shows you how little regard this president has. And when I look at the Biden presidency, it's really mirroring that of Jimmy Carter. I mean, this presidency is really starting to mirror that of Jimmy Carter because Jimmy Carter, while he was trying to do his very best to try to get America on track, what he did was, again, not really connect with Americans. We're out here focused on systems instead of people who were unemployed, people who were struggling, people who were dealing with inflation, could not go out here and meet any of the goals and results, and wound up alienating people to the point where he got crushed by Ronald Reagan in 1980. That's the whole situation I see happening here in America, and this whole situation with begging Joe Biden for $12 billion is laughable because it shows that the cream of wheat man is in over his head, and it also shows that we just cannot go out here voting straight down tickets. No, you need to have somebody who can go out here and present their vision for the city. You need to have somebody who can go out here and present a direction for where they want to go. And you need somebody who has a good understanding of law and interpretation of law. No, you need somebody who knows what they're doing in this job. Because it's clear to me that Eric Adams doesn't know what he's doing in this job. Because when you have over 100,000 migrants doubling the homeless population, what you have is a situation that is mirroring that of what happened with Ray Nagin in Katrina, where the mayor of there took everything for granted at the time, thought that the Superdome would be able to handle the influx of people with no real security, and all we got was chaos at the Superdome, and we also got chaos in the streets, and that whole situation showed, again, grossly unqualified leadership with George W. Bush hiring a horse guy to go out here and run FEMA. And again, we're seeing the same situation happening here with the Blue Party as related to this whole situation in New York. And again, Eric Adams trying to jive his way, try to take 12 billion, not understanding again what political process is, not understanding that it, that it takes years to get money through committees. It takes years to get money through the House and the Senate. It takes years to get it to the president's desk. And we don't know if Joe Biden will be the president in 2025 to at the, at the, at the late at the earliest if they were able to get everything through. Or we don't even know if he'd be able to get it through by 2028 <laughs> because, again, it takes years to get money through. And this money may not would ne possibly never get through until about never because it would get struck down in the House by those Republicans. And it might even get struck down in the Senate by Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. So all of this virtue signaling basically has blown up in the blue party's face and it shows why you don't govern on feelings but you govern on critical thinking and any critical thinker would have gone out here and said hey turn the buses back this is not a local issue no this belong this whole issue is one that is federal and we leave it in the hands of the federal government we leave it in the hands of the federal government which can provide things like fema trailers we leave it in the hands of the federal government which can go out here and provide resources and processing through the ins we leave it in the federal hands but eric adams didn't want to go out here and do that because again he was out here acting like george jefferson the cream of wheat man was acting like George Jefferson, thinking again he could shuck and jive his way into, into a situation, running his big mouth, but his big mouth has written a check that his ass can't cash, and we see that that check is overdrawn, and as it's overdrawn, Eric Adams' days as being mayor of New York may end in 2025, and he will possibly go down in history as one of the worst mayors, surpassing Bill de Blasio, who is considered to be the worst mayor in New York City history, and he may basically make it where we will never see another black mayor for another hundred years. Now, if you want to see me make more videos like this about this whole migrant situation, 
you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the ISIS series, the Esteem series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my black sorority novel, The Thetas, or my vampire novel, Eternal Night, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers, like Smash Force, the iBook Store, and Google Play. That, that's all, all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Bride of Dragon, Goddess Next Door, and John Haynes team up to take on the Dark Vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Bride of Dragon, in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.